Hey, Heart Revolution family, we are so excited that you are here with us today. What an amazing opportunity and privilege it is to be in the house of the Lord. Uh, we have some amazing things happening here at Heart Revolution. One is today is party day. Any partiers in the house? Let me let me hear you from the screen. Um, we have tacos, churros, all kinds of amazing party elements to the service. One of the reasons why is because our very own pastor Richard and Brittany Delamora wrote a book that is released this weekend and we are hosting the party for the book called A Call to Purity. So it is my distinct honor and privilege to welcome, to minister uh, to our church today, our very own Pastor Richard Delamora. Would you welcome him as he preaches the word today? God bless you. Good morning, Heart Revolution. Is my mic on? There it is. Good morning. How are you guys doing this morning? You guys doing well? Well, for those who may not know me, my name is Pastor Richard, and thank you for every single person who's joining us right here at Heart Revolution Church. And if we could, can we give a big round of applause to our senior pastors, Pastor Carissa and Pastor TJ. He is not with us. He's ministering in Texas. But how many of you guys love Pastor TJ? Isn't he incredible? Y'all, we are so blessed to have senior pastors like them. Chris, I love you. Pastor TJ, if you're watching, man of God, I love you. Well, thank you guys so much for uh, being here today. And um, you guys ready to get in the word of God this morning? Are y'all ready? Well, if we could, can we can I get every single one of you to stand so we could honor the word of God this morning? Awesome, man, you guys look so good. Look at y'all in the house tonight. Come the morning, you guys look good this morning. Well, Let's get in the word. I'm going to um, dive into 2 Corinthians chapter 7, verse 1. 2 Corinthians 7, verse 1. I'm not going to waste any time here. We're going we're gonna to go in and have some fun this morning. By the way, um, like Pastor TJ and uh, Abraham said, Call to Purity came out, y'all. If you guys could, after service, we'll be signing. Come on, y'all. You, you can clap. Yeah, come on. God's doing amazing things right here at the church. We just found out that we got we are number 11 right now in the new releases in Christian books right now. Come on, y'all. God is so good. 2 Corinthians 7 verse 1. You guys ready? Reads like this. Therefore, since we have these promises, dear friends, let us purify ourselves from everything that contaminates body and spirit, perfecting holiness out of reverence for God. This morning, if you are taking notes, I'm going to preach you a message called Purity Still Matters. Purity Still Matters. Why don't we pray? Father, we come before you in the name of Jesus, Lord, and God, we thank you for this morning, God. God, you said in your word that today is a day that you have made. So, Father, we're going to rejoice this morning, and we're going to be glad this morning, Father, what you're doing in and through our lives, Lord, and Holy Spirit, I pray that you would come in today and you would invade this house, speak to us, and do a great work within us this morning. God, I know your people did not come to hear from me, Heavenly Father, but they came to hear from you. So I pray, Lord, that you would download in me, God, that you would anoint this message and anoint this time, God, that we have with each other, God. So we bless, Lord, today and all that you're doing, God. We love you, we honor you, and we ask this, Father, in your name, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we pray, amen. Y'all may be seated. Recently, my father came down from Santa Barbara to San Diego. And when my dad was at my house hanging out, he goes to me and goes, Rich, why don't we go get some good Mexican food for lunch today? And I said, Dad, what are you thinking, though? He's like, tacos. I said, I got you. He goes, I heard San Diego has the best tacos. And I'm like, you know, we do. I mean, TJ, you know how TJ gets down, but San Diego, we get down. And he goes, okay, let's go get some tacos. So I said, all right, Dad. So I jumped into my uh, father's vehicle, and we went on the way to go to go get some tacos. And, you know, as we were approaching the restaurant, I had to make sure that I had my, got my mask on. Because how many of you guys know it's annoying when you're walking to, like, the grocery store, you're walking inside the mall, and then you forget your mask and then you know you guys got, it's that annoying walk of shame, right? When you're about to come in and you're like, 
oh, my bad, my bad. And you're just like pl- trying to play it off. Like, oh, oh, I, I, I got I to gotta pick up this phone, right? You're just, you're doing that little walk of shame because you forgot your mask. Well, anyways, I had to make sure, y'all, that I got my mask and I got my wallet. So my dad, we, we, we got there at the restaurant and um, we went in line because there was a line to get inside. And right when we were about to approach uh, the door and walk in, I'm about to step in, and the lady goes to me and goes, sir, you can't come in. And I'm like, what? She's like, you can't come in. I'm like, why is that? Like, I I have my mask on. And she says, the reason why you can't come in, sir, is because your hands aren't clean. And I'm like, okay. She's like, if you want to come in, all you need to do is go and sanitize your hands. And she says, but if you don't sanitize your hands, you won't be able to have access to the store. And I said, okay, I'm sorry. So I went over there, sanitized my hands, and she was watching me, making sure my hands were nice and clean. And she said, okay, sir. She goes, you can come in. When I was inside of the store, I couldn't stop to think what she told me and the reason why I could not get access to the restaurant. You see, the reason why I could not get access inside, it wasn't because I didn't have my mask on. It wasn't because I cut in line, but the reason why I could not get access to the store is because my hands weren't clean. In other words, my access was hindered by what wasn't cleansed. And what if I was to tell you here this morning that our Heavenly Father has given us access to his promises, access to his blessings, but there is one requirement that he's asking of every single one of us, and the Apostle Paul addressed this to the Corinthians, and that one requirement is this, will you purify yourselves? Will you keep yourselves pure? You see, when you hear the word purity, the first thing that probably comes to your mind is no sex before marriage, and Purity is about virginity, and purity is for young people, and purity is just a moment. But could I tell you here this morning that purity is just not for young people, but purity is for all people? And could I tell you that purity is not just a sex issue, but purity is a heart issue, and purity is not for a moment, but purity should be a lifestyle. Because the word purity means freedom from contaminations. So what the Apostle Paul is telling the Corinthians is that will you go and purify yourselves? Will you allow God to do an inward cleaning in you so you're free from contaminations? In other words, will you be free from bitterness, free from anger, free from lust, free from idolatry, or free from any hidden sins that could potentially contaminate your body and spirit? Will you keep yourselves pure and will you allow the Holy Spirit to cleanse you? Because the truth is this, friends, whatever God doesn't cleanse within you, it will start to contaminate and affect everything that's around you. This is the reason why some relationships don't prosper and they don't last. It's because you're cleaning yourself up externally, but you don't allow the Holy Spirit to do an inward work in you internally. This is why some people are limited on how God uses them in the kingdom. It's not because you aren't a dynamic speaker. It's not because you don't have the outward appearance pop in. It's not because you aren't gifted. But the reason why you're hindered by how God uses you is because your gift is larger than your character. And when God looks at your life, he, he's not looking for a person of performance. He's not looking for a person to, who is trying to play church. He's not looking for a person who's one way publicly and another person privately. No, he's not looking for our performance. Our heavenly father is looking for the real you. He's looking, where is your heart at? How is your heart? First Samuel 16 says that man looks at the outward appearance, but God looks at the heart. Can I remind you here this morning that God is still looking at our hearts today. He's looking at what's going inside of your heart. Is there any contaminations inside? Is there any hurt inside? Is there any bitterness inside? Are you battling with lust? What is inside of your heart? And we have a good heavenly father who looks at these areas in our lives and our father is such a good God because he doesn't allow us to avoid them and he doesn't want us to hide these hurts. Because you know why? You can go and try to hide your hurt, but there's one thing you can't hide. You can't hide your fruit. Because whatever's inside of you, 
will eventually come out of you. And God is looking at what is coming out of you. What's coming out of your mouth? How is your actions? And our Heavenly Father here today, my friends, he wants, us, he, he wants us to give him the access to be able to get our minds pure and get our lives pure and get our hearts pure, friends. And I'm telling you here today, if we want to see God use us in incredible ways, if we want access into his promises, access to his blessings, then there's one requirement that he's asking of every single one of here this, us this morning, and this is the question. Will you keep yourself pure? Purity still matters, y'all. So we're going to dive in this morning and talk about a little bit of things that our Heavenly Father wants to address in our lives. And if you're taking notes, the first point is this. Purity still matters when it comes to our eyes. Purity still matters, y'all, when it comes to our eyes. Psalm 101.3. I will set no worthless thing before my eyes. I hate the work of those who fall away. It shall not cling to me. One of my first jobs growing up, well, it, it wasn't even an option in my household, but one of my first jobs was gardening, doing landscaping. In my household, uh, that wasn't an option. It was like a mandate. You had to do it. And I was probably like the only kid growing up who despise summer break, winter break, spring break. I don't like anything that had the word break because I knew what my dad was going to do. He was going to tell me, son, this morning I'm going to pick you up. You're going to go to work all day. And I hated it. You know? And my dad was so cruel. There was times where he would find out that, you know, that I was going to have a half of day. And I would get off at 12 and my mother would tell him. And he'd be like, son, don't think you're going to be hanging out with your friends the rest of the day. Pick you up at 1230 at school, sir. But, Dad, come on, man. It's like a half day. Give me the day off. Let me ball with my boys today. Sir, you're not balling with anything. What you're going to do is you're going to get your clothes on, you're going to go to work, and that's it. It's final. And I'm like, Dad, I'm sorry. Okay, fine. My whole life, y'all, I had to go to work. And I remember this one time we went to a client's house, and the worker told me to go and, and, and edge the lawn. And I said, okay, I'll go and edge the lawn. And I was getting the tool ready, and he told me that I should go and do one thing. And he goes, hey, Richard, I really think you should put your glasses on, man, before you use that. And I go to him, I don't need to put my glasses on. What are you talking about? I, I don't need to put my glasses on. I got this. I'm totally fine. What happens, y'all? I'm going, I'm edging the lawn, everything's looking nice, everything's looking good. I have my music blaring in my headphones, I am jamming out, nothing's happened to me, everything is going good, but then guess what happens? Out of nowhere, y'all, a little rock comes in, smacks my eye. I drop the tool and I'm like, oh my gosh, I put my hand on my eye, y'all, my eye is watering. I go and run, and I look at the mirror. My eye is bloodshot red. I'm holding my eye, and I'm like, no, and it's hurting. I can feel the pain in my eye. And then the worker comes, and he goes, what happened to you? And I'm like, man, a rock hit my eye. And you know what he tells me? Richard, I told you, you should have put your glasses on. You should have protected your eyes. Friends, what was the problem there? The problem was, I let my pride get the best of me. I thought I was invincible. I thought, oh, nothing could happen to me. I could, I could work, and I can go and do this, and I'm not going to get affected by it. A rock isn't going to hit me. And isn't this interesting, friends, how sometimes this is the reason why we get in trouble when it comes to sexual sin? Where we think, oh, you know, nothing's going to happen to me. I could play with it. Uh, I, I, I could mess around with it. Or, for instance, I can go and I can flirt with her, with, uh, with her at work. And, you know, I'm just talking to her. It's not like I want to commit an affair. Or, oh, I can go and talk to him and, and nobody will know about it. And, you know, he's just commenting and messing around. Psh, there's nothing of it. Nothing's going to happen to me. Or, oh, I can go and watch a little bit of porn, you know. 
uh, it's not going to affect anybody. By the way, it's like pleasing me, but uh, hello. But uh, it's not going to affect any of you guys. And it's not going to affect my purity. It's not going to affect my anointing. It's not going to affect my relationship with God. But then the statistics teach us something else. Because you know what the statistics say when it comes to pornography? That seven out of ten men in the church watch porn. Why don't you ask your neighbor, just kidding. <laughs> Everybody got all scared. They're like, I'm getting out of here, y'all. <laughs> Let me take a water break because I was so good. Three out of ten women in the church today watch pornography. Want another mind-blowing statistic stat right here? 50% of pastors and leaders are habitually watching porn. 50%. You guys want to know what the most watched porn day is? It's not Monday. It's not Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. No, it's, it's, not, it's not. Sorry, I don't, that song just popped up in my head. It's not any of those days. It's not Saturday, but you know what day it is? Sunday. Sunday is the most watched porn day. And you know the reason why? It's because right when you hear a word, you know what the enemy's trying to do? Snatch it away from you right away. You see, if you guys, if we're not careful and we don't protect our eyes, you know, eventually we're going to say to ourselves, how did I get here? How did I get here? I, I can't be left alone. I'm battling with this porn. I, I don't even, I'm not even intimate with my wife or my, my husband anymore because uh, I'm letting this, this porn please me and fulfill me. And how many of you know that lust could please you, but it'll never fulfill you? And you're asking yourself this question, how did I get here? Or maybe some of you here today, you're like, how did I find myself committing adultery? How did it happen? How did I get here? I mean, at one moment, I was, I was just talking to her. It's like nothing was going on. I was just talking to him. How did I ruin it? How did I mess up? It's because you didn't protect your eyes and you didn't guard your heart. You see, the greatest lie that the enemy will tell every single one of here this morning is this. You can touch and you can look, but it won't affect you. Greatest lie. The enemy will keep telling you, you can touch it, you can mess around with it, you can play with it, but it won't affect you. How many of you guys know that's a lie? Let me read you this verse to you. Proverbs 6.27, can a man scoop fire into his lap without his clothes being burned? In other words, you think we could mess with fire and not get burned? Friends, eventually it's going to catch up to us. And the scripture teaches in John 10, 10 that the enemy comes to steal, kill, and destroy. Scripture also teaches us in 1 Peter 5, 8 that the enemy goes around like a roaring lion looking for something to devour. If any of you guys ever studied lions, lions are pretty wise in the way that they attack different animals. And it does two things. A lion is always looking for two things. Number one, it's always looking for the isolator. And number two, it's always looking for the weakest animal in that bunch. Can I tell you that the enemy does the same thing to us? He's looking at your weakness. He's studying you. He's studying your patterns of weakness. And he's like, ooh, I got him right there. I know what he likes. I know what she likes. And guess what? When he figures out your pattern of weakness, you know what he does? He sends an advertisement towards your way. Because hear me when I say this, how many of you guys know that the enemy will never serve you a dish that you don't have an appetite for? So he's looking for your place of cravings. He's looking for your place of weakness. And you know what he does? He starts sending advertisements your way. For instance, have you guys ever went online and you were looking for something and then out of nowhere it starts following you wherever you go? Come on, am I the only person? Okay, I am a shoe fanatic, y'all, and there's times where I'll be looking up a pair of shoes, and all of a sudden, I find it on Facebook, and I'm like, wow, and then I find it on Instagram, and then I'll be on a website, and here it is. And you know what the first thought that comes to my mind? Lord, do you want me to buy a pair of shoes today? 
Like, if so, could you bless my wife and tell her, like, your husband needs another pair of kicks, you know? But how did it all happen to you? Because the advertisements kept following you. And I'm telling you here today, the enemy is going to keep sending you at advertisements your way. That's why I love what the scripture says in Psalm 101.3. I will set no worthless thing before my eyes. Friends, if it causes you to sin, get it away from you. If it compromises your convictions, don't put it in front of your face. If it's going to cause you to affect your marriage and affect your household and affect your walk with God, don't set it right in front of you. Because if you put it right in front of you, guess what? That temptation is going to be there. And when you're weak and there's the moments where you're angry and you're frustrated, you know what you're going to eventually could do? You can go and give in to that sin. Friends, be careful what you set before your eyes. Be careful what you set before your eyes. I'm telling you guys, if we want to become all that God wants us to be, if we want to have access to his promises, and if we want God to use us immensely, friends, Watch what you are looking at. Watch what you are working at, looking at. I will set no worthless things before my eyes. Point number two, purity still matters when it comes to our friendships. Purity still matters when it comes to our friendships. Proverbs 12, 26, the righteous choose their friends carefully, but the way of the wicked leads them astray. Sometimes the greatest battle to our purity isn't what we face within us, but it's the people who are around us. Kind of reminds me of this article I read about the poisonous dart frog. There was this article that a scientist put out, and he was doing um, a study on the poisonous dart frog. And what he was saying about this amphibian is that this poisonous dart frog it, it is so potent with toxics and toxins in that if you go and you touch the dart frog, there's only a matter of time until you pass away if you don't go to the hospital because it's that poisonous. But it says something very interesting to his, in his research. He says if you would take out the poisonous dart frog out of its environment, and if you would change what it consumes, it would start to change the toxicity levels that are inside the poison dart frog. So much so that it will no longer be a poisonous dart frog and it will just be a, re a regular dart frog. But the scientists said you have to do two things. You got to take it it's out of its environment and you got to have it stop consuming the wrong things. You see, when the dart frog would be in the Amazon, it would consume these little ants, and it would cause a chemical reaction within its body. And then from there, what he doesn't understand is the thing that he's enjoying is actually creating him to be toxic. So he goes and he starts consuming these little ants, and these ants go, and they start getting this little guy toxic and poisonous. And everything in this ant's life will change as long as you go and you take it out of its habitat. I'm wondering here this morning, if the reason why you're struggling with your old habits, struggling with your old ways, struggling with your impurities is because you are consuming the wrong things. You're consuming the wrong things. You're around negative influences who aren't good for you. When you're around them, all they do is gossip. All they do is complain. I love what my wife says about complaining people. She goes, honey, complaining people are draining people. You're around complaining people. You're around people who go and try to bring out that old you, that, that Frank the Tank version of you. If you don't know what that means, God bless your soul. But they try to bring out that old version of you that died, and they want to try to resurrect it. And friends, if you're not careful... You can go and you can start listening to those words and those words and those influence will, will start to affect you and it will start to affect your purity. And then you ask yourself, how did I get back with using pills again? How did I get back with drinking alcohol like that again? How did I go back into the club again? How did I go back and how am I away from the things of God again? You see, at one moment I was seeking and desiring God, but now at the next moment all I want to do is go back to my past. How did that happen to me? It happened because an ant got in your ear. Who is speaking into your life? The scripture teaches us in the book of Proverbs that the righteous choose their friends carefully. 
In other words, the righteous don't allow anyone in the inner circle. The righteous don't allow anyone to speak into the air. Because if they start speaking into the ear, they have the potential to misguide their destiny. So the righteous are careful of who are in their inner circle. My friends, I'm wondering here this morning, are you being careful who's in your inner circle? Do you have friends who lift you up or do you have friends who bring you down? Do you have friends in your life who push you closer to God? Or do you have friends that push you away from God? Do you have friends who want to help you to get on the path of purity? Or do you have friends who want to take you off the path? What kind of friends do you have in your life? Some of you might be saying, well, Rich, I have uh, good Christian friends in my circle. And, and, and I have good friends in my circle. And, and, and I'm still struggling and battling. But, but here's kind of a challenging thought I would say to you, especially when it comes to your Christian friends. And I'm going to just say it like it is. Just because they have the label doesn't mean they have the fruit. Just because they have the label doesn't mean they have the fruit. How is the fruit of the Spirit out of their lives? Are they helping you to be a better person? Are they helping you in your marriage, in your relationship? Oh, bro, you don't need to forgive her. Shoot, she messed up, dude. And why don't we go out to the club? Why don't we go out, you know, get, get some beers, you know? Let's go get drunk a little bit. Let's go have some fun really quick tonight. She messed up anyways. If you don't have the wrong people in here, they're going to steer you away. The reason why, y'all, I'm so passionate about this is because I've been doing ministry now for over 15 years, and I have seen the greatest men and women of God be pulled away. I've seen some anointed communicators being pulled away. I've seen marriages end up in divorce, and they get pulled away. And the reason why they get pulled away and they fall back to their old ways, why there's divorces, and why they, some people never fulfill the call of the God that's on their life is because of one thing. They had the wrong people in their inner circle. Who are your friends? I'm going to read this in Proverbs 13, 20 in the message. It says this, become wise by walking with the wise. Hang out with fools and watch your life fall to pieces. Friends, this is the year where we're going to use wisdom. <laughs> this is the year we're not going to allow anybody in our inner circle this is going to be the year that we're going to have the right people in our lives so we can become all that God wants us to be. Friends, we need the right people in our circle. In closing, purity still matters when it comes to our hearts. Psalm 26.2 reads this. Test me, Lord, and try me. Examine my heart and my mind. In closing, my wife and I the other month, we kind of had this going off moment, not with each other. We had this going off moment where we were like, ah, let's just clean everything inside of our house. Y'all ever got like that before where you just like yell and you're like, you know what? I'm going to just clean the room, clean the garage, clean the office. I'm just going to go, I just want to clean everything up. Well, anyways, her and I, we started going around and cleaning everything up under the bed, places that we often avoid, in the closets. We start organizing all this stuff. And it's so funny, as we're doing this deep cleaning, y'all, my wife goes and yells out, hey, honey. I said, what's up, babe? She goes, I found that gift card you were looking for. <laughs> Where was it? Babe, it was underneath the couch. I don't know how it got here. And I was going around, I was cleaning, and then I yelled out to her, hey, babe, I found your bracelet you were looking for. It's right here behind the bed. I don't know how it got here. I think Jada Rose, my beautiful little fun daughter, probably put it there because my daughter believes in taking every single one of your valuables and hiding it somewhere. I, I just don't know why she does that. I'm still looking for the sage essential oil my mother bought me, and I don't know where it is. Mom, if you're watching here today, I'm sorry. My daughter hid it. Like, uh, but it's so funny, y'all, that when we were doing a deep cleaning, we started to find valuables. We started finding things that were, that were missing, things that were lost for a long time. But it wasn't until we did a deep cleaning that it showed up. And I'm wondering here today if you have lost the value 
of your peace. I'm wondering here today if that you lost the value of yourself and you don't see yourself the way that God sees you and this is why you you are tempted to go back in your old ways and this is why you marginalize yourself and this is the reason why you settle because you lost the way that God sees you. I'm wondering here today if, if anybody lost the value in how Christ sees us because the way God sees us, He loves us. He's for us. We are the apple in his eye. There is nothing that you can do or can't do that will stop God from loving you. But oftentimes we can't see it. You know why? These impurities are in our heart. It's blocking you. It's blocking you. And because these contaminations are getting the best of you, you just settle and you never become all that God ha wants you to be and has for you because there's contaminations in your heart. Psalm 26, 2 said, Test me, Lord, and try me. Examine my heart and mind. I wonder, I'm wondering this morning if we would be bold enough to say that in our everyday prayer. Test me, God. Try me. God, examine my heart. God, examine my mind if there's Anything that is not pleasing towards you, God, get it out of me. If there's any unforgiveness or if there's any hurt or if there's any hidden sins that I'm battling with, God, help me. Help me, God. Get it out of me, God. I need your help. I believe here today a lot of us need some deep cleaning in our lives because we haven't really stepped into all that God has for us because there's some areas and impurities that need to get out of us. And as all of us stand here today, if we could, as we close. I'm wondering what, I'm wondering, what are you battling with? And how's your heart, really, how's your heart? I think even sometimes, um, even as Christians, we're so good at just playing, the, playing, playing funk, you know? We're so good at performing. Hey, sir, how you doing? I'm highly favored from a highly neighbor, and I love you, and I love a highly savior. Like, what does that even mean, dude? I got to pray for you, and you need to get resaved. You know what I mean? Like, like you're off. I really believe here this morning that there's some areas in your guys' lives that God wants to do a deep cleaning with. Maybe some of you here today, there's some hidden stuff that only God knows about. Maybe it's this hidden hurt or a hidden offense or maybe something happened to you in your adolescent years and, and it's been messing with you. This is the reason why you're angry. This is the reason why you're bitter. This is the reason why you're mad. And, and this is the reason why you're struggling. It's because there's some impurities inside of you. I got some good news for us today. That God wants to get that out of you. That God wants to help you in His grace and His love. He wants to clean out those areas in your life. There's one thing He's just asking of all of us. Will you let Him in? We don't serve a forceful God. We serve a good Father who loves us. He's so patient and gentle with us. I'm just wondering here today, what's going on in your heart? What's going on in your heart? With every single one of you with your heads bowed and your eyes closed. As I was ministering today, and I was posing that question to you, is there something in your life that you need to give up? Is there something in your life that you are battling with? My friends, can I tell you, you can never beat sin. Only Jesus Christ could beat the sin that you are struggling with. You can't do it in your own strength. You've been doing this too long now. You can't do it by yourself. You need him. So if that's you here today and you're saying, Pastor Rich, I want God to cleanse my heart. I want God to give me a new start. Maybe you're here today and you don't have a relationship with God. And you're saying, Pastor Rich, I want a relationship with him. I want to know that God you're talking about. I want to know the grace of God. If that's you here today, on the count of three, I want you to raise your hand. And guess what? I'm going to pray for you believe by faith that God is going to cleanse inside of you and do a great work within you this morning. So if that's you on the count of three, would you raise your hand? One, no one's looking. Two,
Two, God's about to set you free. Three, if that's you, you say, Pastor Rich, look at all these hands in the room. Oh, look at all these hands. Come on, somebody. Look at all these hands. Yes, I love it. I love it. I love it. Come on, somebody. Come on, come on. You guys can welcome your hands down. For everyone who put their hands up, did you guys mean that? Did you guys really want to be set free? Do you really want God to intervene? If you really mean that and you really want God to intervene in your life, here's what I want you to do. I want you to come down on the altar. I want to pray for you. If you really mean that, you're going to say, I'm tired of this. I'm going to give it up. No more. I'm not going to give up on forgiveness, the bitterness, the anger, the pride. I I'm going to allow God to reset and restart my heart again. Come on, somebody. I know we could do better than that. If this is your child, if this is your son and your daughter, I know you could do better than that. Come on, Heart Revolution Church. Come on. Look at all these people. Come on. Come on. Come on. Keep clapping your hands, y'all. Come on. They're coming, they're coming. Look at everybody. Come on, they're coming, they're coming. Come on, somebody. Altars are failed. Let's go. Come on, Heart Revolution Church. God is doing something. 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 Look at people are coming up all around the balcony. Come, come on, y'all. Don't stop clapping. Come on, don't stop clapping. For everyone who came up here, I want to tell you guys this. Today's the day. Today's the day. God's going to cleanse you from everything that you've been battling with. God's going to help you in every area of your life here today. I want to tell you that today begins a new start for your life. And that God's going to do incredible works within you. Do you guys believe that? You guys believe that here today? I'm so proud of every single one of you. Our Revolution family, here's what I want every single one of you to do. I want you to stretch your hands out to everyone here in the front, and I want you to help me pray with them. And everybody here in the front row, I want you to repeat after me, okay? I want every single one of you to repeat after me. Say, Father, I come before you in the name of Jesus. And I realize that I can't do it on my own, and I'm in need of you. Lord, I believe that you died on the cross for me and that you rose again on the third day. Lord, I confess with my mouth and my heart that you are my Lord and Savior. God, I thank you that I'm not a product of my past, that I'm a product of your grace. God, I thank you that I'm not looking back and I'm looking ahead. God, renew my mind, renew my heart, renew my ways. God, I thank you, because today marks the day of a new beginning. God, I thank you for your grace, for your power, for your love, for your presence. Today, I'm not going back, and I'm looking ahead. God, I love you. And I ask this, God, in your name, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we pray. Amen and amen. Come on, somebody. Why don't you shake your hands like something is coming off of you? Come on, guys. Why don't we shake your hands like someone's coming off of you? Come on, Heart Rev family. Today's the day, y'all. Today's the day, y'all. Today's the day. Come on, Heart Revolution Church. Come on, family. Why don't we go? Why don't we worship? Why don't we worship in this moment? Why don't we worship? Worshiping is an act of surrendering. And right now we're saying, God, we, I surrender it all to you, God. I'm going to surrender it all to you, God. Everything that I went through, God, I just surrender it all to you. I'm going to worship you. I'm going to praise you for your goodness, for your kindness, and for your grace. Let's worship him, heart and family.